City. Oh, what a goal it is! everyone and welcome to another episode of the Bola Bola Show podcast. And we got another interesting episode coming up. But before that, as usual, I'd like to introduce my co-host. First and foremost, Bala. How's it going, Bala? Hi, Simon. How are you? Glad. Uh, today's okay. Basically, raining in Klang. I think I'm sure at the PJ as well. How about you, Elvin? It's been a while. I've seen you, my friend. <laughs> yeah, we've only been seeing each other on Zoom and all that, but not really catching up in real life. But, you know, with things starting to open up, you know, we can... Uh, we can all finally gather. So, uh, you know, today is uh, an awesome day because, uh, you know, we have a very special guest with us today. So, the Bola Bola Show, you know, we are pleased to welcome Mr. Peter Diru, who is the Technical Director of the Football Association of Malaysia, FAM. So, hi Peter, how's it been going for you? And good evening. Uh, and, um, you know, thanks for, the, thanks, thanks for having me. Um, uh, how it's been going? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's weird times, right? Yeah. So, uh, Peter, uh, you know, I mean, we can get uh, straight into it. So, so for the for the benefit of our listeners out there, you know, uh, can you share with us your role as a technical director in FAM? Of course, I can. Um, I, I started in the role um, in, in 2017. Mm-hmm. That was um, under the former president, um, the Crown Prince of Johor. Okay. Um, um, I actually spent the weekend with him um, when I decided to to uh, to take the job. And basically, technical director, uh, and, and that's a discussion we had because. Uh, you know, there is sometimes a, li- a little bit of uh, confusion about what exactly the role is. And there's obviously differences um, doing a technical director role at club level or at the um, uh, level of a country or of a member uh, association. So, and, and so I asked him, um, you know, what, if, if you would have to say it in, in one sentence, what do you expect um, from me as a TD? And, and, and basically he said, um, um, I see this as a mid and long term job and your job is to improve uh, the football um, of Malaysia and, and, and in the end obviously uh, senior football so how do we get um, our senior national team and our league at, at a higher level and be more competitive uh, internationally um, and, and then what what my job then means if 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 that's my responsibility as as technical director of FAM and and obviously you can't do that by yourself you need you need support from uh, from from people very high up obviously uh, but it means then that you're responsible um, um, for coach education for grassroots um, for our youth national teams. So it's it's quite comprehensive. So um, I'm a lot involved um, with uh, coach education. We we completely overhauled um, the courses. Um, uh, we wrote a, a development plan and a national way of of playing uh, that is suitable for youth development. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, grassroots obviously plays a big part in improving. Um, Um, football uh, on the long term because the more you have um, kids participating and staying in the sport uh, the more numbers obviously they're already going to do something uh, in in terms of quality towards um, uh, when they become senior and then it's about what do we do with these kids when we develop them uh, and competitions also play a big part in that so yeah it's very it's a very big um, there's a lot of things that need to come together 
Okay, I think interestingly, okay. as a TD or technical director, so when you first arrived in 2017, uh, let's say what was actually a short term plan, let's say between the one to three years for the national team, as, as you know, kind of, when it came to 2017, our national team was still grooming and we were in, uh, uh, what do you say that we were actually equal part, maybe in Southeast Asia, but to maybe to go to Asia level, is, we are still uh, far away. Yeah, well, Oh, that, that's, uh, that's a little bit of a uh, difficult uh, question to, to answer because as a technical director and I just, or in, in terms of national teams, I am um, responsible um, uh, for the national youth teams. So basically our national youth teams, uh, coaches, they are answerable to the technical director. Um, the national head coach, uh, is the national senior head coach is actually not answerable to me. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that makes sense because um, um, in my opinion, our national youth coaches are responsible for developing our players. So, um, uh, but our senior national team coach, he will be um, held accountable for short-term results. He needs to win games. He needs to get results short-term. Um, and he has, uh, and, and in my opinion, uh, the national team senior head coach has the right uh, to do things uh, the way he thinks he should in order to get those results. Uh, and, and, and he will be held accountable for that. For me, it's more that we start developing better players for the national team. That's my job, and that's why national youth coaches are answerable to me, but not the senior head coach. Okay. So obviously, so, so. I'm obviously I'm involved, and um, but uh, it's it's not like uh, you know, um, and and you can also see that in playing style, um, um, because I would love to take credit for the way Tan Shenao has on senior national team playing. Uh, because it's exactly what I believe in, uh, what we should do with youth development. But actually, I can't uh, uh, take any credit for that because we just happen to share the same philosophy. Okay, great. So, so Peter, when you say national uh, youth, the, the youth coach, right? So, what sort of uh, age range uh, are, you, are you talking about? Under 21 or something? Before, yeah, well, uh, before, I... I yeah. In, in an ideal world, let's say, um, mm -hmm. and, and let's say the top teams in the world will do it like that. If they have a technical director, mm -hmm. all the national youth teams up mm -hmm. until on the 19 um, will fall under the national technical director. Uh, okay. We also did that in Australia, but uh, the senior head coach was on the same level as the technical director and also. So the under 23 coach, he was actually answerable to the senior head coach, mm -hmm. which, which makes sense because there is also in, a, in, in, in Malaysia at the moment, there's probably, uh, probably 60 to 70% overlap in players. A lot of our players uh, can still play in the under 23 too. So it makes sense that they play in the same style of football as our, as our first team does. And, and, and to be honest, the situation where we are now, I'm very happy with that because the, 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 the playing style that we, have, um, that we have developed, let's say, or we call that the Malaysian way at the moment, that is exactly the same as our senior national team plays. So now all the way down from, let's say, uh, the AMD program in, in, um, in um, uh, the Mok Mokhtar uh, Dari Academy in, uh, in Gambang, all these boys from 13 years old play exactly the same as our senior national team. Mm -hmm. So possession-based football, collective high press, trying to be dominant on the ball rather than be reactive and park the pass and play on the counter. No, we want all our teams to be brave, to play out from the back, to play effective uh, possession-based football. And when we lose the ball, we get the ball back as quickly as possible. Yeah, and that's also what you see with our senior national team at the moment. And, okay. and uh, yeah, we're now in a situation that we can bring that all in line. And that, that, that basically took two years. And okay. that also had to do with some appointments as well, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think we're in a good space now where we can bring that all in line as, as what a, uh, a, a youth academy would do, um, let's say, in Europe all the way down from the honor 12s to the senior team 
they play similar style of football. Uh, we're in the same team, uh, same bo uh, same situation with our national teams now. Okay. Which I think is good. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, when, when you arrived uh, in Malaysia at that time, uh, did you feel there was a need to like really clean the slate, like a hard reset, you know, and in the existing setup, you know, and given the chance, what, what did you do or what will you do moving forward? Uh, you know, for example, were there any like programs or stuff like that, that, you know, you told that this is not going to work and, and what were your initiatives or things that you introduced uh, during this time? There's a, there's a lot of things um, that, that I saw that needed um, to probably change and in some areas um, uh, even a fundamental change in approach. Um, one thing is, um, uh, one, one massive thing is if you want to be more competitive on, uh, on, on, uh, on international level and if you want to have better, uh, develop better players for um, let's say in, in, the, in the Malaysian Super League, then um, better players starts with better coaches. And um, the problem, I think, is that the coaching in, in Malaysia at the time, and still, is not probably at the level where it should be. Um, but that is not, uh, and here I have to always pick my uh, words carefully, because that is not a dis disqualification of the coaches in Malaysia, um, but the, the reality is that AVM um, uh, and the coaches in Malaysia, or let's say AVM, has relied in coach education always on uh, AFC. If we run a course, whether it's a B license or a C license or an A license, there is an instructor coming in from uh, AFC and he's going to run a course in Malaysia. First of all, these courses from AFC have never, ever been uh, changed over the last 25 years. So in terms of content and delivery, they were uh, very, very old fashioned. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and we basically, what we do is we, um, football has changed uh, uh, tremendously over the last 25 years, but our coach education hasn't. So we keep on developing coaching for, a, for football that, that was played 25 years ago. Yeah. So um, we completely changed um, the content and the way we deliver uh, the courses. So now, uh, and, and to be honest, uh, this is um, AFC obviously is aware of that because they have a new technical director for a few years now. Uh, and they uh, they straight away saw that the, that, the, that the courses were not at the same level as they are in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, which also means you don't develop coaches at the same level. Um, then you can bring in all your instructors and update them. Um, but they did what we wanted to do anyway. Um, and, and we're now in a great position where we have rewritten all the courses up until the A license. So now any... Any A license, B license, and C license, grassroots course, D license in Malaysia at the moment is modernized and is, uh, is, uh, is based on uh, current and up-to-date coaching methods and, and content. And we run our own courses at the moment. And from next year onwards and this year, uh, that will even be with uh, Malaysian instructors. So we don't have to bring other people in anymore. We can run our own courses. The only, the only thing that we, of, of, of course, need to, um, that takes a little bit of uh, time is um, upskilling our instructors. Mm. So, because the more instructors we have upskilled, it means we can run more courses. Uh, we have the courses ready to go now, but we don't have enough instructors yet ready to deliver them. So... Uh, at the moment, uh, the A license is run by uh, uh, our head of coach education, David Abella. Uh, but hopefully, the next one can already be run by one of our Malaysian instructors. At the moment, we're, tra we're um, uh, training 20 instructors in Malaysia up to uh, some of them can already do a C license. The next one is a B license. There's at the moment two who can do a B license. And hopefully, in the very near future, um, they can start running an A license. And next year, um, we run a pro license now for our um, Super League coaches. 
that's still an, uh, an AFC course, but we have a, U of a, a UEFA instructor on that. But the next pro license we run in Malaysia is going to be uh, is going to be our own course. Um, it needs to be ticked off by AFC, but that's now in all our control. And, and to come back to your question, if we want to improve football, coach education uh, plays a massive part in that. Um, but at the same time, you also need, uh, and that's what people always said to me, yeah, we need a DNA, we need a playing style. And that's true. I mean, the most successful countries in the world they have a recognizable way of developing players and, 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 and the way they play. Um, but then again, you can have the best playing style in the world. And you can, but in the end, it comes down to the, or, or the best development plan in the world. But in the end, it comes down to the people um, who deliver it, the quality of the people who deliver it. It's like in education. You can have the best curriculum, but if your teachers are not of the quality required, you're still not going to get there. Mm -hmm. So we have a plan now. The coaches will be, get better and better. Uh, but then we're still not there because uh, a player needs uh, a good development plan. He needs a good coach. But he also needs to play week in, week out in a challenging comp competitive environment. And also there, I think, uh, there's a lot of things that needs, needs to happen compared to European kids or South American kids. Uh, our players don't play enough quality competition games at the moment. So, yeah, it's it's a lot of things. I, I'm i sure you can understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we are true, true. Yeah. Right. Uh, interestingly, and they need to all come together. Yeah. Yeah, continue, yeah. Peter. Sorry? Yeah, yeah Bala, you have a question? Oh, okay. Bala. I mean, interestingly, you're talking about coaching. Uh, from what I observe, uh, basically the... I think that a lot of people want to join, especially the, I would say, amateurs uh, or the laymen who want to contribute to the national team because there's a lot of passion in this uh, football game. But uh, unfortunately, we couldn't see much of this, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe in Facebook or even Twitter or anything that is opening up to the public. Whereby there's a common man actually can come and learn his coaching style and maybe he can contribute to his community or even maybe become our Arsene Wenger on our own. Uh, why? Maybe is there any communication breakdown for the for the public for the, all the DNA or all the coaching program we are making all the while? Um, yeah, maybe. Um, I, I think I understand where you're coming from. Obviously, um, there is regular um, uh, courses that that's a structure and a system that that has always been there, uh, and that's a worldwide system. Um, and and it's your national governing body who's in, in, in charge of running these courses. That's your normal. Pro license, A license, B license, C license. Uh, we run. Uh, we have run two B licenses uh, this year. Um, um, one A license. We're going to start the second part. We run a pro license. Um, I, I think um, uh, coaches are aware of those uh, of, of those courses because um, you know on an A license we have 25 spots available, but uh, we still get at least 90 people who want to be on the course which means we have to run more but that has to do with instructors um, obviously part of those course part of the courses is the DNA and the playing style so it's being introduced on the courses and that goes from um, uh, the courses at uh, at, uh, at the lower level like a C license or a B license all the way through um, to an A license we uh, introduce uh, the playing style there um, but outside of the courses, it's not really being um, introduced yet, <coughs> apart from a, um, um, I think that was 12 months ago, um, um, how do you say that, a kickoff um, where we had all the press and we spoke about it. Um, and now we have uh, planned six roadshows to go through um, all the states and deliver uh, uh, this, uh, let's say, a roadshow on the curriculum and on the, sorry, on the, on the DNA um, within the states. Um, but we only had one um, and then COVID started kicking in. <laughs> so uh, we're definitely planning to... Um, to go into all the states and make the public more and more aware 
of this and, and obviously uh, there is other tools and avenues that we can use and that's mainly the courses. So this DNA has been part of the courses already two years. Mm, okay, okay. All but right. but it, it needs to be probably, uh, it needs to be much more uh, widespread um, and, and because, you know, you can, again, you can have the best plan in the world, but if it's not being implemented properly, you still have a problem. Yeah. Mm, okay. So I'll take, I'll take that, but we, as, as probably as a little bit of an excuse, um, we had uh, six roadshows planned um, throughout Malaysia, and uh, after the first one, we had to, uh, we had to postpone that. Mm, okay. Okay. And of course, uh, Peter, when you arrived three years ago, the national team was, you know, going through one of its bad spell. You know, they went throughout the whole year yeah. without a win. Yeah. And of course, in recent time, especially last year, we had probably one of our best ever runs. Uh, since you were more involved on the youth development or the age category group side, uh, have you seen any of your plans, sort of like your short-term plans, being achieved already the national team in the transition of from then to now? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, um, um, uh, like I said, uh, I would love to take credit for the se the performance of the senior national team because I think they made ha they have made an incredible um, shift. Um, uh, only within two two years time, with basically a, a similar pool of players that we can pick from. But I think uh, Tan Chen Hao has has done an incredible job. Uh, because, um, uh, yeah, like, like you said, I came in 2017. The first game I saw of the senior national team was in, uh, in Malacca versus Hong Kong. And, um, yeah, to be honest, that, that was for, already for me very hard to actually see what kind of type of football do we actually want to play. Uh, I thought the players were uh, very undisciplined. Then people tell me, yeah, but uh, it's a little bit uh, Malaysian, a typical Malaysian that the players are, uh, yeah, not disciplined. And, and I'm thinking, well, hang on a minute. Uh, I maybe get what you're saying at the same time. Um, um, the discipline and, and, the, and the culture in the dressing room is set by the leader and the coach. And now I see, um, I see a, a team playing that, uh, that uh, obviously we won't win every game, but I see a recognizable playing style. I see that players understand what the head coach wants. I see that the players are disciplined. Um, uh, so I'm incredibly proud of um, what uh, Tan Xian Hao has achieved in, in two years' time. Uh, and it also shows you that, um, that there is a lot of room for improvement also in the Super League because it's the same players that play week out, week in, week out in the Super League and you still see, um, yes, you still see a lot of games in the Super League where the distances between uh, the striker and the central defenders is 80 metres uh, it's a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, direct long ball football. It's a, it's a transitioning game. Um, and I think Tan Shen Ho has proven that our players are actually much better than we give them credit for. Um, so, um, uh, in, in terms of the senior national team, I'm, I'm extremely um, uh, satisfied with, with uh, what has happened and, and, and to be honest, I don't even look at results. I look at performances and, and how we want to try to play and do we do that. Uh, but also the results have been uh, good. But also the football that we have been playing, uh, uh, I think, um, uh, looked good and um, actually suits our players. And um, when you look at um, the, the youth teams, um, our under-19s uh, last year qualified for the AFC, which will be later this year. Um, I have been a, a bit critical because I think um, uh, in terms of uh, results, we've done uh, great. But I think in, in terms of how we want to play, uh, I think there's still um, uh, room for um, a, a little bit room for improvement, as always. Um, but uh, also knowing that the players, um, yeah, especially in a qualifying tournament, uh, only were together for a very, very sh short amount of time. Uh, and then when you look at the on the 16s, who um, unfortunately didn't qualify for the AFC, they won an AFF tournament. But when you look at the performances 
and, and even the results, because I think they won every game last year. Uh, but the most important one, they actually lost, and that that meant that they didn't qualify. But that team played uh, played some very very good football with um, you know a, a draw against Japan, where in the second half they dominated Japan with a with a player less. They completely outplayed Australia. Um, yeah, th those are things that has hasn't been happening for a very long time. And um, look, results can be this uh, can be very. Um, this can be, uh, yeah, they can disguise the issues. That's why I always look at performance. And when you look at the performances against Japan and Australia, and and don't judge them on the fact that they haven't qualified for this year's AFC, um, then I think, um, yeah, if we want to produce better players for the future, then this is how we need to play. And, uh, and, and I still think that... Uh, those performances and playing this way can uh, can actually have a positive outcome on the results too, but it will definitely help develop better players in the future. So uh, I also think that it's been um, um, yeah we can be reasonably set about, satisfied about uh, the performances and the results of our uh, national youth teams in the last two years. Okay, all right. So, uh, uh, Peter, where, <coughs> where do you think Malaysian players stand in terms of two major factors here, physical and mental development, compared to uh, our counterparts in Asia, like Japan and South Korea? Like, like what is FAM doing in approach, uh, in terms of bridging the gap, in terms of mental development, like, uh, like trying to get more thinking players out there? And also in terms of like for physical development side, maybe like sports science, nutrition, uh, special workout regimes, I, I'm not sure. So maybe you care to share with us what are FAM's plans in yeah. this? Uh, these, these things are all, all, uh, obviously uh, play a big part in, in the coach education at the moment, even, even the mental part of it, because um, um, you know, part of being a coach is, um, is and it's definitely a youth coach, is preparing your players mentally for... Um, to become a professional player and uh, to be honest i've seen a lot of talented players uh, also in malaysia in in, uh, in in the last two years that um, are extremely talented but probably in the last uh, the last step uh, to become a uh, let's say a um, a seasoned professional or to to really uh, gain your your um, um, to gain your uh, spot in the team, um, we lost a lot of quality players because um, I think from from the age till 16, 17, 18, and all of a sudden that last step seems to be big, too big uh, for some players. Um, and I think that has to do with, um, uh, first of all, the opportunities they get in terms of, of, uh, of playing. Uh, and we need to look critical. Do we have the right competition available? I mean, when you look at, um, for, uh, let's say, a player like uh, Akia, uh, one or two years ago, uh, mm -hmm. or maybe even, even uh, and, and there's quite a few examples. Um, they're probably one of the better players in the under-19 team, but hardly get any playing time in the Super League. Well, if you're a top player in your under-19 team in Holland, you for sure you play in uh, in in the Dutch Eredivisie. Why mm -hmm. is that? Why is that not possible in in Malaysia? And then you look at the uh, average age of the league. It's 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 close to twenty eight years. That's older than any uh, than the than the top ten leagues in Europe. Well, that's the quite average, surprising. Twenty eight, you say the average age? Yeah, it's close to twenty eight. Wow. That's quite and uh, which obviously uh, doesn't really help because mm -hmm. we need we need our top talents that are 18, 19, 20 years old. They should play in the Malaysian Super League. And that has to do with opportunities they also get from, uh, and you get them from coaches. We, we seem to always uh, fall back on, um, you know, experience, so-called experience. Mm -hmm. or, or, um, but experience sometimes only means a number of years, you know. Uh, it's not the same. Um, and, and so I think a lot of co uh, players don't get enough opportunities. There is also another thing uh, I think um, 
I don't think we prepare our young players well enough for that senior dressing room. See, imagine if you're um, 17, 18, 19 years old, uh, and we saw a player last year, nobody knew um, the player, and then he plays one decent tournament on the 16 level, it still means nothing, but after that tournament, he becomes like a celebrity in Malaysia. Mm. Um, we need to help these players um, uh, to deal with that because the next time they come into a senior dressing room um, and, they, and they think they can get away with putting in 80% um, um, or they follow the, long, the, the, the wrong players in the dressing room because I think some players in the Malaysian League, they are so spoiled, they earn a lot of money they're the big heroes in the dressing room and they think they can get away with everything. And maybe they can, but that young guy, that young guy cannot, but he sees them as an example. You know what so, I mean? Yeah, so those, those, those will not be very good role models. Yeah. Oh, and, and, yeah. and maybe you cannot change that as a coach. As a coach, of course, you set the standard in your dressing room. So mm -hmm. that's your responsibility. But our responsibility, I think, is not, uh, yeah, maybe we can influence the coaches in the course and how to, how to establish a culture of excellence in the dressing room. But at the same time, in programs like uh, the AMD, we can prepare our players from 13 to 17 years for that last step. And that's not only football, that's mentally too. That's physically too. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a complete package. Uh, and I think we can do much better. Uh, but to, to be honest, um, you know, there have been some changes in, uh, within the AMD. And um, um, I have a lot of faith in the people who are in charge now. Uh, that is uh, uh, Saad Ichelalena, who worked uh, for PSG. He was already involved, but he has a bigger role now in AMD. Mm -hmm. AMD has a new director, Dennis Becking. Uh, a lot of experience in uh, in a top youth academy in in, in Holland. Um, so yeah, to be honest, I'm very excited uh, uh, for the future of, of Malaysian football and and the, the young guys that will come through the next next few years. Mm. Actually, I'm very curious about mental development. Okay, if you talk about something physical, yeah, you know, you go to the gym, you pump the iron, you work out, and all that. But mental development, uh, is there any sort of examples maybe you can give us? Do these players, I mean, do you put these players through some situational uh, things so they need to have awareness or I don't know, some, some exam or something? I mean, maybe. maybe uh, well, 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 uh, first of all, um, it's something you already uh, look for, um, maybe, when you uh, identify players. Eh? The, the mental aspect should be part of that. Uh, because, uh, to be honest, um, mm. obviously, if you want to make it as a professional player in Malaysia, or, um, or in general, if you want to be um, successful in, in whatever you do, of course, you got to have a certain amount of intelligence or talent for whatever it is you do. But whether you reach it is for 70% determined by your, uh, your attitude and your mentality. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so obviously that plays a big part. And, um, uh, and, and there's a lot of things you can do because um, uh, we sometimes have the discussion and we talk a lot about it on, on, on courses. You know, what does it mean? Uh, are we talking about a winning mentality? Or are we talking about uh, being mentally tough? Because I think that's what we're talking about. Being mentally tough. Mm -hmm. It's just habits in your life. It, it means that you, whatever comes your way, you see as a challenge, not as an excuse. Um, or it's all those type of things. And you mm -hmm. can constantly uh, remind players of that. And you can even train that. Mm. Uh, there's enough examples uh, you can do, and, but you need that. You need to do that. It needs to almost become a culture in your program. Uh, no excuses, only, um, mm. uh, only challenges, uh, um, uh, you know, and, and to, to, uh, to make it easy even. Um, uh, and that's a funny thing in, in Malaysia. Uh, for me, being mentally not so tough also means that... Um, that you, that you struggle to stay focused on what you train for. A good example is, uh, and, 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 and I think that, that, that tells you something about mental toughness. 
I, I just told you that uh, my first game was um, um, uh, my first senior game was um, I think it was against Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia against Hong Kong in in, uh, in Malacca, where we got one or two red cards towards the end, and I think we conceded a goal towards the end, and and there was a massive fight. Do mm -hmm. you remember that game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember the game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I've been sitting there, and I'm, I'm, I was um, actually sitting next to Alistair Edwards, who I, I know very well. And I said to him, "I think this this is this game is gonna um, is gonna run out of control because um, what I saw is that the players were not disciplined in terms of uh, at, at some point the first half was okay, but then we didn't start tracking back anymore." Um, we had our number 10 um, starting to play as a second striker, didn't defend anymore, where the other two holding midfields now played in a, in, a, in way too big a space. They, they came everywhere too late. Um, I see the, uh, some of the coaching staff constantly talking to the referee and the fourth official. Uh, and at some point, the players will start doing the same. So rather than to focus on... on on your task which is you know what do I have to do when I have the ball when I don't have the ball and, and, and that's all in your control a referee is not in your control fourth official is not in your control uh, but that's all being mentally tough but that standard is also being set by the staff mm -hmm. and now people tell me yeah but the players in Malaysia are mentally not so tough then I'm going to ask you the question have you seen this behavior in the last two years on the Tanchi now I haven't Mm -hmm. So clearly, uh, we setting we start setting a decent culture in the dressing room, because I tell you, Tanji now wouldn't accept it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks to the referee, only the head coach. Nobody else um, has stuff like that, uh, and and that's I think we need to. It's just a small example, but we need to uh, coach our players to to think differently, and 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 um, and that means. Um, uh, in a game, you focus on what you train for, and that's your playing style, that's your task as a team, that's your task as an individual. Everything else, forget about it, it's not in your control. That's the only th that's that's what mental toughness is. Mm -hmm. And I think we can help our players um, a lot more, but it also takes a coach and a, or a staff that is mentally tough. And, and you will see that all of a sudden, um, that problem is maybe not as big as we think it, it, it might be. Mm. Uh, and I've seen that, like I said, uh, I hope it makes sense what I, what I say, but I think the senior national team is a great example um, that in a short amount of time, you can actually change a lot. Uh, also mentally, because um, I see a completely different team mentally uh, now than two years ago. Would you agree that with me or not? Yeah, that absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally agree. On that. <laughs> they just focus on the football and what's in their control. Uh, they don't. They don't do crazy. Yeah, of course. Sometimes there's there's a player that that might lose his head or doesn't press when he should press or whatever. But in general, the discipline is extremely good. Yeah, even the recent the game in the World Cup qualifying again in Indonesia right by the fans uh, was. Yes. Yeah. They were very calm, and fully focused on the game. Yeah, and I think that's a big credit for the players. It's a big credit for uh, the staff. And it also shows you that uh, those standards are being set um, by the head coach. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And, and, then, uh, and then you can, you re you can really build a cult culture within your team. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what coaching is, besides the football, uh, next to the football staff, obviously. Yeah. And of course, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, changes that is uh, in terms of the Malaysian football landscape, um, you know, many years back when the NFDP was first introduced, the National Football Development Program was introduced. Of course, yeah. at the time, it was under the Ministry of Sport who was in yeah. charge of that program. So, you know, there was always this question, you know, the Ministry of Sport is in charge of the National Football Development Program, where else, you know, FAM uh, is not. So, have we sort of like bridge the gap in, in order to make sure that this program is well funded and well managed to ensure that you know that when these players are developed under this program you know there is a proper part for them to the professional teams and all that you may want to shed some you know, of this 
Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because um, it was one of the things that, yeah, was very, very weird uh, for me because I have obviously knew of the NFTP program, which basically are the elite players in um, in Malaysia, but FEM hardly had. Uh, um, to, to me, elite football should fall under the federation, uh, not under, uh, not under um, uh, let's say, the Ministry of Sport, how it, how it obviously was. Um, because FEM had nothing to do with, do with it. It was almost like a very big um, private academy. In, in saying that, um, obviously, that program... Um, uh, and, and a lot of credit has to go to uh, um, the former um, uh, minister of um, minister of sport, or actually the one before that. When I came to that, uh, um, uh, you gotta help me with the name again. Is it uh, Kairi Jamaluddin? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, obviously, the one who who implemented this program. Um, that was a, a great initiative and something that uh, the country needed. But at the same time, I thought that there was not enough um, influence from uh, the national governing body. If we are talking about uh, a Malaysian playing style, uh, that the first thing where you want to introduce it is in that program, right? Um, so, um, but so we started talking and. Um, and obviously, the program is uh, still lastly funded by the, um, uh, the Ministry of Sport. Um, but in terms of football, it's very much of a collaboration between uh, the NFTP technical director, the academy director, and FAM uh, uh, in, 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 uh, through me and through our uh, head of youth, uh, elite youth, uh, Dato Ong Kim Sui. So we work very closely together now. And um, yeah, I would say we're very much on the one page with that uh, program. And um, I reckon it, it's now where I think it uh, in the, the place it should be. Uh, it, and it wasn't like that, in, uh, let's say, two years ago. But that definitely was, uh, you know, I don't want to come because I've said something about this before. Um, and and I'm, I'm, what I definitely don't want to say is this program was an absolute necessity that it that it came and it was a great initiative from the uh, minister of sport and i think he can't be credited enough for that yeah. uh, and and luckily now we're all on, on board and and, and we we working on that together and to be honest uh, i'm extremely confident of where we are with this program at the moment with um, uh, NFDP, A and D, uh, and everybody who's all the stakeholders that are involved. Um, um, yeah, very, very hope, no, hopeful. It's not, not, it's not even the right word. I'm, I'm very confident that uh, we are now in a place where uh, we definitely will uh, deliver um, um, and start producing consistently um, better players for the league and for our national teams. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I have to agree. I mean. Uh... All credit goes to uh, YB Kairi Jamaluddin because of the fact that you yeah. know, he brought this program. To me, it was a breath of fresh air than what Malaysian football fans are so used to seeing at the yeah. time. And you know, to see that he also brought in, as you mentioned, uh, that to, uh, uh, not to, not on, uh, what was he named Lin Tiong Kim for uh, for that matter, who was you know working in Germany for so many years. We, we saw that, you know, that there's potential in that program, but there was always this question mark, you know, I mean, when these players come at a certain age, where do they go from there? So if yeah. it's been addressed by FAM, and I think the future is really bright for, for our football. That's, I mean, that's just my view of it. Well, that, that's another thing. I think we're really in terms of what, what are we doing with the players when they are in, in the program? Uh, that's, more, that's, uh, that, that's much better and in line with um, you know with uh, modern trends in, in, in youth development uh, I still think we need to look very careful at um, you know to spend five years a lot of money on, on players and then they're 17 but we uh, we can't get enough of these players getting um, uh, game time in in the league within either straight away or within uh, 12 to 18 months 
uh, we still need to look critically um, uh, at that because I think I still think that that gap is not bridged yet. We haven't found really the answers yet. They are partly in um, in in uh, they are partly the, um, addressed in terms of uh, mentally prepare them better for that step. But uh, in the end, it 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 is also about um, the opportunities you get. I'll give you an example. Uh, our under 17 players last year for AMD, they played in the in the President's Cup, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now a lot of these guys go to Selangor and JDT. Mm -hmm. Let's say if they go to Selangor, what competition do they play in next year? Okay. Are they going to play in the under 19 league now? Mm, I mean, that should be the case. That should be the case, right? Well, if they play, play last year in under twenty-one competition, it wouldn't make sense to play them in an under nineteen competition now, right? Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. That definitely. is way. That is way below their level. Mm -hmm. and would be catastrophal, uh, catastrophic, for their development. Mm -hmm. But it, it. I wouldn't be surprised if it's happening because we're too focused on winning a league rather than to develop players for our first team. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Agree. And that's something we really need to uh, make sure that that doesn't happen because that doesn't make sense. And to be honest, any uh, and, and that's a thing we really need to change in Malaysia. Why do you have an academy? Why do you have youth teams? Not to win leagues, to develop players for your first team, right? Yes, mm -hmm. correct. And I don't think we treat it that way. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, just for the just for the in the argument's sake. I think the coaches yeah. within the team, uh, I think they are under pressure, or the manager under pressure to win the game or, or, or on the basis yeah. of getting sacked. And, and, so, and that's why I talked talk before about um, fun, fundamental changes are needed. Do you really think that the head coach of under-18 Ajax is under pressure to win the league? No, he is under pressure to develop players for the first team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ajax doesn't care whether they win the league or not. They need to develop the next Matthijs de Ligt. They need to develop the next Frankie de Jong. Mm -hmm. That is what youth development is about. To be honest, any person involved, either as a coach or responsible for youth football, thinks that winning is more important than the development of a player, should not be involved in youth football because he's not suitable. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a crime against youth development, to be honest, but a massive problem globally. Okay, okay. I mean, at least now... If I, if I, if I coach an under-14, under-15-year-old kid and I make choices, or an, an under-14 or under-15 squad, um, and I make choices that make me win a game or win a league, but are at the detriment of the development of the player... Um, that's not okay, is it? Yep, definitely. <laughs> so I think, okay, should we look into more becoming a feeder feeder league to the bigger leagues, maybe to Japan and Korea? Is this what you're trying to say? Like, for example, like what you say, Ajax or even uh, South American no, leagues? Look, look I, I would love to see that Malaysia in the, in the future goes through a... Um, see, um, the, the big difference also with, with Europe is that um, development is, uh, development is, is club-based in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, we hardly have, uh, you know, that we only have one club or maybe, maybe two that basically have an academy in, in uh, Malaysia. That's JDT and, and possibly uh, maybe half-half uh, Selangor. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, yeah, what I hope is that really um, the clubs are going to take more and more responsible in, in starting uh, an, an, an academy to develop uh, players. Because, you know, when you talk about AMD and you talk about the under 16 or under 17 uh, or the under 15, whatever for that matter, that's 50 players per age group, right? Or 40. And when we um, um, and, and the, the year we take them in is on the 13, so we start scouting at on the 12, on the 11, and basically we pick out of maybe um, um, let's say two to three hundred Malaysian um, players, we make a decision at 12 year old, we give 50 players a spot at the AMD, right? 
that means another 250 or, or maybe even four or 500 do not get that opportunity. Where are they going to play? At what level, what opportunities do they get? Mm. We narrow our pool of players very, very early. Imagine if all the academies would, oh, sorry, if all the clubs would have an academy at the same age groups as A and D. Mm -hmm. Then you wouldn't have 50 players playing at a certain level. No, you would have five, 600 players playing at a level week in, week out in a, in a competition. Plus, hopefully, they get the same opportunities in terms of competition, in terms of quality coaching. I mean, the big, the big problem now is uh, where we really need to uh, be aware of. I mean, if I pick 50 players out of 120 when they're 12 years old, it's very hard to get it right, uh, you know, when they're 12 years old or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, imagine if you're not in the 50. What are your chances to then um, go back to where you come from? You will have less comp uh, competition opportunities. Maybe you don't have access to the same quality uh, coaching. Would these guys still be able to get back in the system later? It's going to be very hard, right? Definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. And that's something when, uh, when I think it was in the last year of John Kim, uh, um, he took them to the AFC on the 16 AFC two years ago, right? Yes. So the, the national team were all players for AMD. Which, which I understand, okay, that's fine. But all these players were already in the program from when they were 12 years old. Do we really think that our under-16 national team now uh, at that time was our best under-16 players of the country? Good question. Yeah. Well, it's not a question. That they, they were not. Of course they're not. It's impossible. It's impossible. Uh uh, Peter, what about like how how big is the scouting network in, in in Malaysia? Like, do you? I mean, does FAM send like scouts and and all these to those villages to to no, you we, know, we, schools at the moment, to to uh, look for that to look for these guys? You know, like even guys yeah, who maybe we, they, they 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 can't afford to buy boots and and but the talent is there. Yeah, but yeah. definitely the talent is there. I mean, mm. um. um there is so much potential in Malaysia. It's not funny anymore. And we have so much talent. Mm -hmm. We have 10 times more talent than we have in Australia here, 100%. Wow. Uh, okay. But to develop the talent, you, only, you, you need to have talent. You need to have attitude, maybe. And, and you need to be mentally. But you need to get the opportunities, too. And a lot of kids do not, are not exposed to the opportunities. Yes. Uh, we really need to have a much bigger pool of, of, of players that get those opportunities. Uh, and scouting uh, and competition are, are, uh, and talent ID are, are playing a massive factor in that. Uh, the scouting at the moment, I think we made uh, a lot of progress in there and NFDP is, is to credit for that because um, and we work together with them and with the KGRNs in the state. We have a much, much bigger, a better picture of what's, uh, of what's out there than we had probably two years ago. Uh, are we still 100%? No, we're not. Uh, so we still need to keep on working uh, um, uh, on that. We cannot rely on, on, on scouting at 12 years old and then hopefully we got it right because of, obviously you make mistakes. There's so many, so many players at 12 years old, they might, not be, um, um, they might not be ready yet, but a year later they might be, be, be better than the other 50, right? Mm -hmm. But only if you get the opportunities. And I think um, uh, scouting is, is and talent ID and, and uh, make sure that all these kids uh, play enough competition games, uh, uh, that we really look after the players who maybe have not made AMD, AMD. We need to keep track of them. We need to make sure that they get similar opportunities. Um, the AMD should be the benchmark. But they should be all academies all over the country, uh, uh, basically trying to strive for that same uh, quality. Uh, imagine, um, and then we're not talking about 50 players per age group, but we're talking about four, five, six hundred. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, but, uh, the cycle, obviously, the cycle has to continue. You can't just rely on one cycle and then, you know, 
hope you get it right. I, I believe that what you're trying to say is that, you know, it needs to continue on and on and on until the whole program is refined, until you can find that one group of players that can able to deliver the best result that Malaysian national team can enjoy. I mean, yes, yeah, but uh, look, I think I think we have the the potential in Malaysia, and this program has the potential for now as well to um, uh, consistently, well, not, not not even talking about cycle uh, a cycle, but consistently produce um, uh, better players uh, year in year out in every age group because now we're all on the same page. Two years ago, also within and within A and D. Some of the teams were playing completely different than the other team. Uh, th these are things that you won't see anymore, and that will have a massive impact. Uh, imagine, imagine um, the under 13 year olds when they come in playing four or five years consistently in a similar way uh, that uh, uh, Tan Chenao plays with our senior national team. That's going to be massive, and, and that hasn't happened yet. Uh, but we're, we're we're now in a situation where we are able to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right, Peter. So so uh, earlier we talked about short term plans. So now let's look at some long term plans. You know, like five years and beyond. So uh, where do you think the Malaysian national team should realistically be by then? You know, like is there any uh, winning some major tournament in Asia, qualifying for the World Cup? You know, like if, what 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 are these targets? That have been said. Uh, you know, I think we need to. Um, you know, people always want to hear about targets, and and obviously also my bosses and media. Everybody wants targets, mm -hmm. but I think, and I understand that uh, you need to at some point have uh, put things in place that are maybe measurable. Um, the problem, though, is you also got to make sure that they do not fool you. If we want to be successful. We need to um, think much more in process rather than um, than um, re a result, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you focus on a process, uh, mm -hmm. consistently develop players in a, in a similar way all the way through. Increase your scouting. Uh, increase the quality of your uh, coaches and and especially the ones that play with your ta most talented young players. Um, then for sure we will start developing better players for our national team, but we got to make sure that we don't get um, uh, get uh, how do you say that get fooled by being too fixed on fixated on short term results. We need to make sure that we stick to the process. If we believe in it, all of us, then we should stick to it. Then I'm convinced that. Uh, that, that will uh, produce better players in the short term, but consistently in the long term, it will definitely uh, produce better players and makes us more competitive. Um, and I think we're in a position that we can uh, at least uh, dominate Southeast Asia, qualify on a regular basis for senior AFC uh, um, uh, tournaments. But developing a player consistently through the same um, methodology with different coaches, because every every player has different coaches. But if everybody sticks to the same plan or the, uh, the same plan, um, it takes you from let's say six, seven years old to, till you're uh, a little bit above twenty. So it takes you fifteen years, right? Mm -hmm. yep, yep. So. We all know when Belgium became successful, that was around 2012, 2014. The first, uh, you know, when they started introducing their uh, playing style and then and completely overhauled their coach education. That was in 2000. That was 12 years before. 12 years. Mm. Yep. Um, Germany got successful in 2010 with the generation of Kadira, Müller, all these guys in 2010. You know, when they started after the Euro uh, failed, Euro. Euro tournament in 96 it cost them 14 years mm -hmm. okay so uh, to for for the but i'm not saying to malaysian uh, you know supporters we got to wait 14 years no no obviously you will see uh, some things happening earlier but to consistently according to this plan uh, consistently develop uh, players that are of a better level uh, the first one to come true. Uh, everything that we start now from grassroots up, yeah, these players are now eight years old, right? Six, seven years old. Mm -hmm. 
But basically, they need... when, they, when they are a senior player, they've gone through the whole thing. They've gone through the whole pathway because all those coaching courses, it's also aimed from, uh, you know, there's, there's four different stages in development. How do we, what do we do with our eight-year-olds? What do we do with our 12-year-olds? What do we do with our 16-year-olds? Yeah. It's all um, written down in, in, in a plan. We need to make sure that it becomes basically our roadmap and for a player to come through that complete roadmap that we just introduced, um, that kid is now eight, nine years old. So that's going to take him uh, 11, 12, 13 years, years, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying here that we need to wait 12 years to become successful because you also can, you also can influence a little bit short term. And I think we can already do that. Plus, uh, AMD is doing now uh, some incredible work. Um, so we don't need necessarily need to wait that long, but for it to become consistent, uh, uh, it might take a little bit longer. But uh, and even Tan Chen Hao has uh, already proven in two years' times how much how much you can difference you can make with a similar uh, talented players because the players are not in the league in the Super League are not more talented than two years ago, but the football is better uh, with our senior national team and the results are better. And I think they, they can even become better because it's an ongoing project that Tan Chen Hao is working on. And, um, uh, and, and yeah, uh, when you look at a senior national team, uh, at the moment, you know, the people sometimes want too quick. We had a great uh, run in the Suzuki Cup. We played good football. Um, um, but it doesn't mean that we're going to beat uh, Vietnam from now on. I mean, they're not standing still. And, and, uh, um, but we are much more competitive than we were before. We play good football. Um, and yeah, I definitely, and, and oh, look, look, against the, the game, uh, look, look at the game against the uh, UAE. Mm -hmm. um, um, we can give a lot of teams in Asia that, that, that like two years ago, we thought, oh, my God, do we have to play them? That's going to be 6-7-0 uh, or whatever. I think we can uh, give any team in Asia a run for their money. But it doesn't mean that we now automatically start qualifying for AFC every... every uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't work like that. But um, I think even with the available players... Tan Chen Hao already made a massive uh, improvement. And I only see that going from strength to, to strength, to be honest. Uh, definitely when you know what's coming through in, in the next years. And definitely in, uh, 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 like let's say, in six to eight years' time. The, the, the kids that are now 12, 13-year-old coming into AMD. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so looking forward to see them making their, their, their debuts in the senior national team because it's going to happen and it's going to mm -hmm. be better, 100%. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. realistically, realistically, do you think that you know, in, uh, we should be there for the EFC uh, 2023 in China? Look, um, I, I think we have the ability to, to, to qualify. We, we have seen, um, um, uh, but we got some tremendous, some, some very big games coming up. I mean, playing UAE mm -hmm. um, away, uh, Vietnam at home, and we have, uh, in, who, what's your one? I think it's Thailand. 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 Yeah, Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. I mean, I mean but to even sit here and, 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 and talk to each other that was second in the group and, uh, and we still have a chance. I mean, mm -hmm. we probably yep. we wouldn't have thought that two years ago, would we? No, no yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> compared compared for, for. to the last World Cup qualifier and, to, and now, oh, it's, yeah. it's, and it's yeah. extremely different. But, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, um, at the same time, there is a danger in that because, you know, getting good results is, uh, is feeding expectations. And expectations... Mm -hmm. Uh, when they're too high, high, they will always be disappointed. They'll be disappointed, and when people are disappointed, they make irrational decisions. Yep. Um, so all of a sudden, because I've I've heard stuff like, "Well, if if we don't win the the, the next two games, or oh, maybe we need to look for another coach." And then I'm I'm, I'm I'd love to say this on your podcast because I've never said this in the media before. Um, 
let's look at what happened in the last two years in terms of process and in terms of performance. Um, you, can't, we, you can't deny that, not even if we fail to qualify or we might lose away against UAE. Um, um, that, that would be, um, um, that would be, how do you say that? That would be, that would be really judging um, like on a scoreboard rather than on what happened in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be, um, it would be a pity if we all of a sudden start panicking if we don't win away from UAE and we don't qualify because if we keep on doing what we're doing and we keep, become better at it, um, the results will come 100%. Yeah, and yep. maybe even already come this year. Let's hope, yep, but yep. let's not panic either when it doesn't, <laughs> because I think that doesn't give enough credit to what uh, our, our head coach has done with his players and his staff. Oh yeah, true, true. I mean, I, I have to say this. You know, the, the brand of football we are playing these days is something that I'm really, really proud to say that. Uh, it's, me, you know, me too. the side, we are playing beautiful football, and I think that's that means a lot for a lot of nations. No, hundred percent, and uh, I think yeah, I think to be to be honest, um, yeah, you can't give enough uh, credit to the players and uh, and the staff for that, uh, and, and obviously there is a great, uh, um, you know, and that that's good to see as well that there's now a great um, atmosphere or or maybe even how do you say that. Um, um, yeah, how does it? Uh, there is something happening with it with the crowd now than the team too, which is good because the players feel rewarded and uh, uh, they feel that uh, what 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 they do is being uh, is being appreciated. And uh, yeah, and, and look, uh, we don't go to UAE to bury ourselves in the 18 yard box and see what we get on the counter. No, we go to UAE and and give them a run for their money. And try to dominate in their own, in, in, and that's something that hasn't happened for a very long time. And I think uh, they sh it suits us, and, and I think it shows you that we we can um, we can do a lot more than we think we are capable of, just by being brave and playing with confidence, because we have the talent, we have the qualities. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, since you, let me pull you back to the players' development. Since the patient is a virtue in this uh, in this development stage for the for the younger generation, uh, as you can see, the league wide itself, I think most of the players are currently is uh, at, at the national team are playing for Johor for the team in respect, and uh, other teams are still not playing a lot of catch up. So, this development wise, do you think the league should be more competitive? As now currently, I think there's only a one horse race to begin with. Yeah, but to, to me, um, um, I think that's always uh, a bit of an excuse as well. Mm. I mean, uh, yes, uh, JDT might have more money to spend, uh, but money without a plan means nothing. Clearly, they do some things very well too, uh, and probably better than a lot of other clubs maybe. I don't know. Um, but, um, and, and of course, money uh, helps, but at the same time, and I think Cruyff uh, always said this, a bag of money has never scored a goal. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. So, yeah. it should not be an excuse for other clubs to become lazy, because if you're creative, if you work harder, you're more creative and you work harder, you put in more effort, you have better plans, you do your work better, uh, you still have a chance to be competitive with uh, JDT. Why not? Yeah, but the, the, the interesting point you made is basically is there's a talent everywhere, but it's not been. It's, yeah, it can't if, be if seen. you're saying if you now because uh, uh, an, another thing, for instance, is um, um, look. Uh, the reason I say this is that I hear too too often, oh, JDT has all the money and that's why they win. Uh, well, that's a little bit too easy and it's not giving enough credit to what has happened there. Yeah. At the same time, it's almost like a club or a coach already gives themselves an excuse for not uh, being competitive in, in uh, with, with JDT, which I think is a um, wrong uh, starting point. You should be uh, you should be breeding confident in your clubs and say, okay, they might have more money. That means we need to work harder. They have more money. It needs to be. It needs to mean that we need to spend our money more effective. 
it means it means maybe means that we need to be more creative don't talk about excuses come on mm -hmm. at the same time uh, yeah you sometimes see players go to jdt sitting on the bench while there would be a starting player and maybe one of the better players in one of the other teams yeah that is something that if that is what you mean and you see that sometimes uh, happening. Uh, a good example is Akiyar, probably would have played in any other team, but hard to get playing time at, uh, at JDT, uh, which is a problem for the national team. Yeah, um, yeah, that's also a little bit the reality of, of football. Um, and that's also sometimes uh, choices that, uh, that, uh, that, that players make and sometimes make too early. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's the nature of the business too. That that doesn't only happen in Malaysia; it happens everywhere. Okay, okay. It would yeah, be I nice mean, though if players like that could be loaned out again, so they can play at the level they should play at. Okay. All right. Okay, um, guys. Any last questions? Uh, no, I think I think I'm fine. I think uh, what what Peter. Uh, highlighted today was uh, very good and uh, in fact uh, something caught me by surprise was the average age of our of our national team uh, which I this, this, yeah this, 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 yeah yeah, yeah the league, honest, sorry yeah and to be and, and, honest i might have uh, exaggerated a bit because uh, <laughs> i did this i did this research um, two years ago mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and where I compared it to other leagues and then uh, this had to do with our uh, under 23 playing uh, uh, they played an international tournament and I looked at uh, I looked at the, that the majority of the players hardly had any uh, uh, had mm. played any play uh, hardly had any uh, games played in, in, in the league I think less than 200 together and they played against the country who complains about this uh, issue already uh, four years in Australia, where there's only nine uh, A League clubs, mm -hmm. but the players in that on the 23 team already had uh, over a thousand games played in the A League, uh, significantly less. And then I looked at the average age of the league, mm -hmm. and it, I think it was 27.6 or something. So, mm -hmm. but it, what it was, it was very high. It was higher than any yep. league uh, in um, any of the top 10 leagues in Europe. Mm -hmm. which even higher than uh, two years higher than the Premier League. And the Premier League is a buying league. It's not a development league. It's a buying league. And even that league was two years younger in gen in, in, on average. Yeah. So, so having, having said this, you know, this is where we need to give more chance to the young and hungry players, you know, rather than, rather than focus on the senior, the senior guys yeah. who may not have that same hunger and drive, uh, you know, uh, no, hundred percent. I think you. That's mm -hmm. a very valid point. Yeah, and and I also think it's also a, a good thing that teams that, as you mentioned, you know, teams with less money or less funding should rather focus on you know grooming young players, giving young players more chance rather than, uh, yeah, I would say, you know, filling up your import slots just for the sake of it because you know everybody else doing it. I mean, I know the import slot is there for for you. It's a privilege given to you. You can sign players, but you know it will be wise to rather than give that slot to the, to the to these young, hungry young players who, you know, give them a chance to you know show what they can do on the field. One hundred percent. You'll be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for my son, I just checked on uh, just uh, roughly in this uh, in the internet and just found an interesting fact as well. For two season two thousand eighteen two thousand nineteen, the average age is about twenty eight point three years. And uh, some team even have an average age about 31 years old. <laughs> okay, that is interesting, guy. <laughs> At least today we learn something. That's my case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, for my part, I just want to say, I think, uh, thank you for your time, with us. Uh, but uh, one question is, basically, I think uh, there's a lot of amateurs out there want to be involved in football, especially at least to the local leagues or even local community to support, to develop players as much as possible. So maybe is there any way maybe they can f follow you all in maybe in FAM or any any part whereby this kind of uh, like you say the roadshow uh, information is available for any of our listeners so that they can involve in the, to be part of your NDP or sorry uh, what this DNA mission new DNA uh, uh, 
program to support this mission team as well. Yeah, no, uh, look, uh, I'll, I'll take your, your point maybe in, in terms of implementing. We need to maybe um, um, uh, look at that. Uh, I know it's available for everybody because it's, uh, uh, um, it's, on the, um, it's on the FAM website. Uh, yeah. But obviously, uh, a lot of stuff that's in there um, maybe needs uh, also a little bit more explanation than just uh, be out there and... Um, mm-hmm. um, so we're definitely going to go ahead with the six road shows and then probably evaluate, um, you know, what the next step is to, you know, to, to really to make it part of um, um, basically uh, the, the, the culture, um, that it's a no-brainer that we play uh, um, a possession-based football with our young players when, uh, rather than just kicking the ball to the other side of the park so at least we don't concede while we lose the ball playing out, stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, and and um, it, it's it's a matter of, um, yeah, um, make sure that becomes uh, widely available and it becomes just, just common sense to everybody because I think that's what it is. Uh, and, and to add on that, I also want to say that this... Um, the Malaysian DNA, you know, I, I, I always had a little bit uh, of a problem with the word DNA because DNA um, is supposed to be unique, right? You have a yes. different DNA mm-hmm. than I. That's correct. Uh, but this Malaysian football fan, this DNA is not unique. It's, it is very similar to what countries like Belgium, Germany, the English FA recently uh, Barcelona, Croatia, Australia, New Zealand, Japan. It's all very similar in terms of playing style, but also in methodology, because a lot of these principles are, um, are not an opinion. They're actually a fact. They're a fact, on, on, uh, a fact of how uh, young people learn. It's, a, uh, it's based on, uh, on research. So it's it's not unique. It's something that a lot of countries already uh, doing. Um, the only thing is that we have, uh, m- uh, let's say, adjusted it to the uh, Malaysian strength, mm-hmm. if that makes sense, and culture. Because uh, and also in the implementation, you need to understand, and you we need to, and I need to understand, and I need to accept that Holland is not Malaysia. Uh, Belgium is not Malaysia. The principles of how to develop, best develop players are similar, but how to bring that to life in Malaysia might be different than it is in Australia or it is in New Zealand, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because you, you, there is a demographic circumstances, there's a level of your coaches, there is infrastructure, there is lack of competition, or there's a lot of competition. So to, to achieve maximum outcome, we need to... Um, understand that Malaysia has a unique culture and, and, and also a unique football culture. Uh, but th- this DNA, it's not rocket science. It's not uh, something that hasn't done before. All right, all right. So, uh, any, any last word, uh, Peter, be- before we wrap up this podcast? I mean, is there anything you want to share with us? No, the only thing I want to share is obviously that uh, um, I was honoured um, uh, to be part of, of your show and uh, happy that, oh, sorry, glad that you were um, uh, for being with you and um, wanting to have me on the show. Okay, yeah. all right. I mean, it, it was a great discussion, Peter. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was an honour to have with you. Yeah. I'm sure listeners will take a lot of input from this to understand exactly what football development, football culture is all about. I mean, it's, it's, while it's easy, as you mentioned, it's easy to look at how other countries have done, uh, but it's not always easy to, you know, to fit in everything into the Malaysian context. It always has to be customized according to the Malaysian needs. So, um, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, with that said and done, uh, there's nothing much for me uh, as well. Uh, we will wrap up this podcast. So, thank you, Peter. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast. And, um, any last word, guys? No, thank you. So hope hope to create another podcast again soon. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much, Peter. Right. Okay. Bye. That's bye. it. We will wrap up this podcast. So bye for now.